Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are in a different setting. This is my room. Today's video is really exciting. I'm excited to let you guys in on a few tips and secrets about FSU's housing experience. Back when I was applying, I know that I was confused as to the whole housing process and like how it works and there weren't any videos really. I think there was one video, one girl did a video on housing and it's really outdated. It was in 2012. So now we're in 2019 and I feel like this video can help a lot of you guys that are confused and coming into FSU and just help you guys out. That's what I'm here for. I'm just here to help you guys out. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you have any more questions, leave them down below and I'll be sure to answer them in the comment section. Let's get into it. When you get accepted into FSU, they give you the option to do on-campus housing or you could do off-campus housing. And if you choose to sign up for the on-campus housing, you basically fill out all the contract information, all the emergency contact and all that, and you have to pay a deposit fee. And this deposit fee for summer is $100. And if you're going into fall, it's $225. And you basically have to pay this deposit within seven days of submitting your contract. If you don't know whether you're gonna do on campus or off campus I would say just do it because you can cancel it within a certain period so there's like a period I think it's until like May but they give you a certain period where you can cancel it and you can get all your money back but then after that period if you cancel it late you get like portions of it and they start subtracting how much you get it back but I would say just do it just in case because you don't really know what's gonna end up happening and you don't really know the prices of off campus housing and stuff like that so just know that you can cancel it but you do have to pay that deposit fee with in the seven days. Now, when you do your contract, you also have the ability to put a roommate preference. So basically, there's three types of roommates you can have. So you can either get a random, go with somebody you already know from like high school, or find someone. So starting with the random, some people have really bad experiences and some people have really good experiences. So it's honestly just like up to you and how you are and like what really you want to do. Going with someone you know is pretty safe for the most part. That's what I did for finding someone. What they do now is they make big Facebook groups with everybody that's come into the class so like for example this incoming freshman class is FSU class of 2023 and people are just writing there about them so they write like for example oh my name is so and so and I'm from here I like to do this I have this interest message me if you need a roommate whatever whatever and you kind of try to find somebody that's like you because they don't really do like roommate matching anymore so I would suggest that if you don't have anybody you know you want to room with Go on Facebook and look for somebody that has the same interests as you and just like someone you think you would get along with and just start talking to them and you guys can put each other as your roommate preference so that you guys can get each other when they assign the rooms. For picking your dorm, it works differently for summer and fall. If you're going into summer, they basically pick it for you. So you do your contract and they ask you to do like a dorm preference. So you basically put down your list of like your number one dorm that you want, your number two and your number three, all the way to like 10. I think they make you do like a couple just in case. And they basically pick it for you. You don't pick which one you get. In the fall, it's different. They basically do it by contract numbers. So in past years, they used to do it all by like first come first serve whoever does their contract first will get first pick on the rooms but this past year they had like a window of i want to say three days and basically within those three days people signed up all people signed up whatever and all those people got assigned a random number so you could have gotten the last number you and you could have been the first one to apply so it was really weird this year i don't know why they did that but that's basically how they do that and then after that three day period then it's like priority so then it's whoever signs up first gets the next best number with your contract number it's probably going to be in the thousands there's like thousands of contract numbers they email you the day that you're going to be allowed to go into the housing portal and pick your room so during that specific day and time is when you'll be going so whoever has the higher number like one is going to be getting the room that they want first and then the 8,000th person is going to be getting the room last that's how it works a common question that i get on a lot of my videos is like oh my contract number is this number like is this bad whatever i'm scared that i won't get the room that i want so basically i would say that from like one to 
2,000, maybe 3,000 is pretty good. One to 2,000, I feel like you're gonna get more of the dorm that you actually want. For example, mine was 3,000 something and we got Wildwood, which isn't bad, but by that time, all the ones like all the newest dorms like Azalea, Divini, those four new ones, those were already full by the time that I had to pick my housing. So you can kind of go off that. If you're like an 8,000 number, I'm gonna be honest, you're gonna be kind of rough and I don't know, I I think like by that time it's gonna be like between the graph which is like kind of off campus it's like not on campus you have to like go through a tunnel to get there or like sally which is like the worst one because it's like kind of communal style not really communal but it's like two small rooms and a common area room where all the bathroom and stuff is and it's just like really really old and there's been like so many horror stories there so you know anything can happen and just know that whatever contract number you get just know that it's actually lower than that because some people cancel their contract contract between the time frame and they cancel it even after and they just don't get their money back don't be discouraged if your number is really far like really anything can happen In terms of paying for your housing, the housing is usually due the second week of classes. It says like the second Friday of classes and financial aid disperses a week before. So it's kind of cutting it close. It's honestly kind of annoying why they wait so long. But there's also payment plans. So you can sign up for a payment plan. You can talk to financial aid office and, you know, figure out how you're going to be able to pay for that and stuff like that. They always work with you. So I would just contact them if you can't pay it right away. Finding out what dorm you get. So for summer, it's a little different because remember that they assign you what dorm you're gonna get. So for summer, basically how I found out, they didn't send me an email or anything, not that I remember. I I think the way that I found out and I was talking to Daniela about this the other day was that I was just looking through my stuff so basically I found out on my FSU, my, my, my <laughs> my my fsu account and when you go into my fsu account on the right there's going to be like a little thing that says enter student center or it's going to be on the top left that says like sc and that's going to be the student center so you go into the student center and then there's going to be a tab that has like your picture well you might not have a picture yet and it's going to say my info and you click on that and then it's, you're going to go down on the left there's going to be like a list of options and you're going to put my addresses and that's going to show you it's going to show you your ubox address and also your house housing that you got for summer so that's how i found out for summer and for fall you know what dorm you got because you picked the number on the certain date that you had to pick your dorm all right so now we're gonna go into tips i have a lot of tips for you guys on getting the best dorm and just knowing things around there so tip number one of my biggest tip is to when you're picking housing and you're actually picking it not like the summer where they pick for you i would go on to the fsu facilities page and you can look at all the floor plans with and you enter in your my fsu id and then they allow you to look at the floor plans and you can look at all the floor plans and look at all the square footages of the room and i would do that daniela did that for me and her when we had to pick our rooms and we got the biggest room on our floor in wildwood so i would say do that so that you can like try to get the biggest room and try to get the best room and i would also say try not to pay close to the elevators because that's like a lot of traffic coming in and out my room this past year was by the elevators and it was kind of loud all the time because people are coming in and out of there so it's kind of inevitable also there's a kitchen on every floor and a study room except for the first floor i don't know why the first floor didn't have a study room so a microwave is really optional and the kitchen has an oven but for us i mean a lot of people like to bring microwaves because it's only like 20 dollars honestly yeah like i don't even know where you can buy this what's that place um Brandsmore, i went there buying dorm stuff and it was like 20 dollars. i'm pretty sure don't call me on this because i don't know microwave prices but yeah so it's pretty optional but it's also like kind of nice like if you want like a late night second you don't want to go out of your dorm like to just have it in your dorm well i've seen people cook in there like they meal prep and stuff like that so they can just have it in their room but yeah something to know and another thing to know is that every room comes with a mini fridge with a freezer part a trash can and a recycle bin and the trash cans are small they're not like a huge trash and you can basically just use that they have a garbage like chute on every floor too 
so then you could just throw away your garbage like that okay so laundry is always on the first floor of every building so you would if you're living on the fifth floor like i did i would have to bring my clothes down to the laundry and you basically put money on your my fsu card and there's a little like swipey thingy you pick the washer that you're gonna use you swipe it and it takes out the money and it's like i want to say like a dollar 25 for the washer and like 45 cents every time you put it in the dryer pro tip for the laundry do not do your laundry on a laundry day like sunday everybody is doing their laundry you're never gonna find it's literally a mess to find a washer and a dryer and there's like 10 washers and like four dryers so you, people have literally left because there's like literally no dryers with their clothes wet and they come back another day to dry it so i would say do your laundry be smart and do your laundry on a day like i don't know wednesday at night when nobody's there or friday because everybody goes out on friday and you can just do it with calm and like you can use all the washes you want you could pile up your clothes from three weeks and use like five washes and four dryers because nobody's there just trust me going into privacy in terms of like the dorm and stuff so the way you get into your dorm is with your fsu card literally your fsu card opens everything you need to ever get into at fsu so don't lose that and it basically gets registered into your card that you live there you can only use that at your dorm you can't use that at any other dorm so the only way other people can get in is through a little call box outside they just call the front desk and ask who they're coming for and then they'll call you to come down and get them so it's super safe don't worry about that and also you have a key to your own room so nobody can get into your room yeah it's pretty safe and fsu pd is like literally on campus so i've never felt unsafe like going into my dorm another question i got was like how is your roommate experience she asked for like tips on it and i, I wouldn't say i really have tips i would just say like the biggest thing is just respecting each other's schedules and what each other has going on so like if i went out at night and i came back really late i wouldn't turn on all the lights and be super loud because obviously my roommate is sleeping you know so it's just being respectful honestly it's someone that you've never lived with before you've never had to live with and they live a whole different lifestyle at home so it's something you just really have to get used to i just don't think it's that bad if you just like respect each other that's all you gotta do so yeah that's everything i have to say about housing at fsu especially well specifically on campus if you guys have any more questions please leave them down below and i'll be sure to answer them i'm always commenting back to you guys's questions yeah be sure to comment any other videos you want to see me make don't don't forget to subscribe to my channel we're almost at a thousand subscribers which i'm so happy for thank you guys so much and i'll see you guys in the next one bye, bye.